Caching objects is a very straightforward process, um, but let's first start talking about why or what a cache is. I can see up here it says N cache. Okay, so what I can do is if I hit play, if I rewind and hit play, I can see that it goes very slow because it has to process kind of all that information. And depending on the computer, this could be a very, very slow process. You'll also notice that I can't what's called scrub through the timeline. Like I can't play it backwards. It can only solve forward. And it's not very ideal. Let's say if I had a lot of trees in the scene or if I had an animated character, it could get really messy. Okay, trying to figure out what's going on. So if I record the position of these leaves on every frame and then have the computer memorize that position, then it could play a lot freer. It's not gonna change dynamically, but I feel like at least it'll be faster. Uh, so that's what's called a, creating a cache. Okay, it's kind of like putting it into memory. So the way that I do that is I'm gonna go here, create new cache, and is it a fluid object or an N object? Well, this was created by N cloth, so it's gonna be an N object. If I go to the options here, I can see that I'm going to put this into the Intro to Maya cache, N cache folder, and I'm just gonna name this uh, leaves there we go and um, let's see there we go so in the um, okay so end cache slash example and leaves and then I'm gonna say one file per frame and I'm gonna say I don't want the whole time slider. I want only frame one to 50, because that, that's enough to kind of get the point across. And now I'll go ahead and hit create. Now it's going to calculate, and it's gonna calculate from frame one to frame 50. And what it's doing is it's recording that information into an external file that that way the computer can kind of process and kind of think about it much quicker in the future. So when it gets to frame 50, it should stop. Okay, good, there it is. And if I wanna physically see what that looks like, if I go to my file here, I can see that it's in my um, Intro to Maya cache, and then it's in N cache, and then I made one called example, and then that's what it looks like, okay? Uh, there, it's an XML document, and then you can see each frame has kind of its own file associated with it. So now this is cool. I can actually scrub through the timeline and you can see how much faster it is, right? I mean, it's just instantaneous, okay? And watch the timeline. If I um, stop and I'm gonna go ahead and rewind, I'm gonna play it and you can see how fast it goes. And then after frame 50, it slows down because now it's dynamically calculating again, okay? But I wanna show you something that's kinda of cool about this cache, okay? So if I click on the leaves, and if I go in here, I should be able to find, ah, here's the cache, and I can see that it is enabled, okay? And right now, it's playing frame one through 50. But let's say if I wanted to have it like repeat that. So what I could do is I could have it uh, post cycle. I'm gonna say one and let's see what it does. Okay, cool. So it played it twice and then you can see that when it gets done, it's now calculating dynamically, okay? Now that wouldn't make a lot of sense, but I think that I like to use this tree as a way to illustrate how a cache works. Uh, because then, once you realize that you can cache almost anything dynamically, then it becomes a very powerful concept, okay? But let's see what happens if I did oscillate. And I'm gonna put the post cycle at two. Now let's see what happens.
Okay, kind of crazy. So, and you can see that it stopped there. I'm gonna go to, um, since we have it cached, since it's cycling three times, I should have 150 frames worth. So just like an oscillating fan, you know, it plays forward and then backwards, forward and then backwards. I could also do things like this with the cache. I could reverse it and maybe I'll turn off oscillate. So now reversing it, you can see how it, that it does that. It's kind of interesting. Okay. I could also do this scale. Okay, let's see what happens if I put the scale to two. And I'm going to turn off reverse. Okay, so it looks like what it's doing is it's taking it twice as long to play that cache. So in other words, it's slowing it down. And if I put the scale like 0.5, it would play it twice as fast. Nope. There you go. It plays it three times super fast, and now it's going to slow down and calculate dynamically. I'm going to leave scale to one. You could also change like where in the cache it starts. Right now the cache starts in frame one and then goes to frame 50. Um, so think if you had like a whole forest of trees and you cached all the leaves, and it was the same leaves that you were caching, you could then um, have some start on different frames so they don't move all exactly the same. Okay, so it's kind of interesting here that how you can kind of relate to the cache and kind of use that cache to your advantage. Um, the negative of a cache is I feel like there uh, can be large file size. So let's see here, if I right click, Okay, ours is only 14 megabits, so that's not too bad. But imagine if you had a lot of stuff in the scene, um, and we also only have 50 frames, really. Um, so it's, once again, not too bad. But the cache files can get very large. But the plus side of the cache is that it is stable and very fast on the computer. So once again, I think the idea a lot of times is to create dynamics in the scene but then get them out of the scene as fast as possible. Um, and by caching it is a good way to get it out.